business and government kind of get a change in relationship compared to the Gilded Age. Before, in the Gilded Age, we were able to practice laissez-faire, which is basically let it be. The government just lets the business happen. Um, natural cycles in business are going to happen and just not get involved. So the benefits is you get big cities and you get lots of factories and you get lots of profit. Some of the cost of laissez-faire is you end up having some people acting um, not illegally but not exactly the most upstanding uh, way of doing business such as standard oil company who you'll have things like monopolies where one company controls all of that business or it'd be like if we had a cable company and it was the only cable company in the United States well then they can charge whatever money they want or trust where you have a couple of companies that work together and again can control prices and um, so these were the types of things that were going on and then you also have um, Sometimes the treatment of employees can be another issue when you have the government or no regulations at all. One of the acts that was passed during this time um, in reaction to the laissez-faire was the Sherman Antitrust Act. And this was to keep monopolies from happening and um, prevent and that because those monopolies would prevent fair competition. So they want to make sure that this did happen, and this is Teddy right here, Theodore Roosevelt, and he was president whenever this w this happened. And the big thing to remember with the Sherman Antitrust Act is it changes the attitude of Congress towards the abuses of big business. Before they kind of turned a blind eye, now they're gonna um, they're gonna engage with these actions and try to do something about it. Two acts that uh, two other acts that happened during this time, we have the Interstate Commerce Act which is going to um, create the Interstate Commerce Commission to enforce the act. And this was really a way to regulate mainly what was happening in railroads and regulate buying and selling and trading between states. And again, remember, this was a populist problem that they brought up was regulating railroads. And so it tried to regulate unfair business practices. Another one that we already mentioned was the Pure Food and Drug Act. This is thanks to Upton Sinclair and his accounts of what he saw in meatpacking plants. And this is going to regulate the preparation of food and also the sale of medicines. And um, so, again, very thankful for Mr. Sinclair and his book and bringing to light what was going on in these meatpacking plants. Another thing that's going to happen during this time is difference and in, in change in monetary policy. We're going to have the Federal Reserve Act that's going to be passed. And this, the big thing for this one is it's going to regulate the amount of money in circulation. And we're going to have these regional banks that are mixed private and public control. This probably sounds a lot like the Bank of the United States, so it's sort of like that, but not really. Um, they're going to issue currency to banks in the area. Uh, and again, goals for this, restore confidence in the banking system, but also the to regulate the money in circulation. And eventually what's going to happen is you're going to have what's called go from the gold standard to fiat money, which gold standard kind of drizzles out later. And the fiat money is basically paper money. And this one, a lot of people don't realize, is that our money today has no real value except for what the law and the federal banks deem its value. So your your $100 bill that you have sitting in your pocket is a piece of paper and it's only worth hundred what we consider $100 by law or regulation. And the goal of whenever this does happen, and um, it's actually going to have more impact in the Great Depression, is to expand money supply and then again try to stimulate economic activity. So how will this era be assessed? So we have a pretty straightforward question right here from the released U.S. History EOC. I want to read my question first. How did the publication of Upton Sinclair's The Jungle contribute to a change in the relationship between government and business? So I want to look for, was the question asking me? So it's talking about Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. And it wants to know how did it contribute to a change between government and business? How did this book make the way government and business work together change.
Okay, I know this was about the meatpacking plants. I know that this led to the Pure Food and Drug Act. So I want to keep these in mind, and I know this is a law passed by the government that affected the businesses that made food, that put together food or meat packing or that kind of stuff. So let's look at our answer choices. A, federal troops were mobilized to break strikes by labor unions. Well, I know that the jungle was about um, the horrors that were seen in these meat packing plants and the treatment of uh, employees and that kind of stuff. It wasn't about having strikes. So I'll cut that one out. Uh, government regulations requiring the inspection of food products were implemented. Hmm, kind of like the Pure Food and Drug Act. That sounds kind of promising. C, Congress created a regulatory agency to audit railroads. Well, this was about food and the meatpacking industry. It was not about railroads. So we're going to cross that one out. D, laws were enacted that banned private companies from discriminating when hiring. Again, this was about safety and cleanliness it wasn't about the hiring practices. So I'm going to cross that one out, and that leaves me with B, government regulations required for the inspection of food products. There's a question where you have a reading selection. So something that's very important to remember when you have a reading selection is you want to make sure that you know, you want to make sure you pay attention to the who said it and the year, because that can help you out. Theodore Roosevelt, we know he was a progressive president. Okay. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Now I'm going to look at the question because it's going to help guide me when I'm reading my, um, my reading selection. The main strategy that President Roosevelt's administration used to stop the type of business practices criticized in this excerpt was to. So he's talking about a strategy that his administration, which means his, whenever he was president, what they did to stop business practices that are described in that paragraph that are criticized, so I know it's going to be negative, because criticized means negative. So what was the strategy used to stop the business practices that they're talking about up here? Okay, so when I read this, I want to read through it, and then I may cross out maybe words I don't know, because sometimes you can still understand what it says without knowing what the words, what some of the bigger words mean, so don't give up when you get to a big word. Just read through it and move on. I hold that a corporation does ill if it seeks profit in restricting production or seeking to achieve monopoly by illegal treatment of its competitors. Well, I know monopoly is one of those keywords. If, on the other hand, a corporation seeks profit solely by treating the public and its rivals fairly, then such a corporation is behaving well. It is an instrumentality in... I don't know what that word means. I'm going to cross it out. Um... Civilization operating to promote abundance by cheapening the cost of living so as to improve conditions everywhere throughout the whole community. So we're looking for the part that he's saying that they're criticizing. And it talks about um, they're achieving a monopoly by illegal means or treatment of its competitors. Um, so if they're trying to seek profit in those ways, then we don't want to have to do with that. And so we want them to treat the rivals fairly. We want to promote abundance by cheapening the cost of living and improve conditions everywhere. So what happened as a result of all this? Um, let's see. Let's look at our answer choices. A, establish a Federal Reserve System to regulate the money supply. Well, this is talking about business, and this is talking about banks. So those don't go together. Urge the Interstate Commerce Commission to decrease corporate regulations. Actually, the Interstate Commerce Commission is going to end up increasing corporate regu regulations of some sort. C, the use of the Sherman Antitrust Act to ensure competition in industry. Well, I did see something about competitors and rivals. So, and I know that Sherman Antitrust Act had to do with breaking up trust and monopolies. So, I'll leave that one there. D, lobby Congress to loosen restrictions on foreign exports. Ports. This is not talking about issues of exports or trade. So cross that one out. And our correct answer is going to be C, the Sherman Antitrust Act.